Minecraft 1.20 build hacks. I hope you brought some bricks because this one's all about pots. This is a decorated pot and you cannot put a plant in it for some reason. You can, however, put a flower pot on top of it and put a plant into that flower pot, which actually looks really, really good. That is because this little nipple they have is actually translucent for a lot of the blocks that you can put on top of it. Here's a short overview of all the blocks I found that don't make the nozzle on top of the vase disappear. It's actually quite a few of them and I have quite a few of the favorites. I like how you can put a candle into a pot and it centers itself and then you can light it and it will look like the entire pot is a giant candle. But my absolute favorite gotta be the carpet on top of a pot. It's really helpful for creating some sort of a dinner table scene where you have yourself your bowl of soup, your cup of tea and a bunch of trapdoors concealing that all of those are actually pots. Also these pots work really well with trapdoors and I checked every single trapdoor in the game and in my opinion the mangrove one looks just the best with it. I think it makes for a really nice floor design. By the way of all the blocks in the game the new pots match the best with mangrove wood and the uncolored terracotta. Another cool life hack is building yourself a little bonsai trees like this. Really just a matter of putting a decorated pot, putting a fence post in it and then some leaves on top. Also, this is a decorated pot with a regular pot on it. Uh, in the pot there's a cactus and then on top of it there's some moss blocks. It looks really nice, but if you want it thinner, you can easily put a bamboo stick in there or maybe a propagule. But if you already have a pot that you like, you might want to display it on your wall as some sort of a poster or something. Unfortunately, this doesn't necessarily work out every time because you got this seam to every side of the pot between the block and the pot. But you can actually fix that by simply grabbing two paintings and putting them to the side of your pot. You can even stack several pots on top of each other and this trick will still work. This also is pretty helpful if you want a little bit of a shelf. This way put the trapdoors on and put paintings against it. Now we just flip it open and we got ourselves a shelf and the side wall with the back of the painting texture. Unfortunately, this does not work when you have several pots standing in a row, but there's a way to bypass that as well. All we gotta do is place our pots in a row, uh, grab a bunch of item frames and put the item frames carefully against the corners of the pots. Now we have a little bit of connectivity going, but it's still not perfect. To make it perfect, we're gonna grab a map and put that map into the item frames between the pots. Now, this map is showing us an area covered in grass, so it works really, really well with the lime green concrete. Fill in the top side, and look at that, we have a very interesting novelty wall design. Especially if we don't forget to actually put a shared onto the pots and make this kind of a picture wall. Also, if you don't like the pictures on the actual pots, you can always just put the item frames on them. The little trim they have in orange actually trims the item frame almost perfectly, like pixel to pixel. This is really, really good. Now let's talk about the chiseled bookshelves, and this might be the easiest build hack in this entire video. We just put two bookshelves on top of each other, put some trapdoors to the sides of them, grab a book, and fill the top one entirely and only the top row on the bottom one. Snap this into place, you know, and this is a soda machine. Each book in the bookshelf actually will always take the exact same color depending on the place in which you placed it. So here are the blocks that I found that most correlate to each book in the each position. I hope you will find this helpful. Here's also an assembly of blocks that go really well with the new chiseled bookshelves. Obviously this is the good old fashioned bookshelf regular, uh, the loom that kind of looks like an empty bookshelf and the beehive that kind of looks like the drawer. But what was a really nice surprise to me is how well the stripped oak log blends with the new chiseled bookshelf to a side. Also, we can't forget that the bookshelf itself has a different texture on the sides that are not active and on the top and on the bottom, which all can be used in decorating. Also, we can cover up the top of the bookshelf with slabs like this, put a banner in front and voila, we got ourselves a guy wearing a sombrero. Look, these are the eyes and this is the mouth with the teeth kind of grinning. But by far the best addition to the game ended up being the bamboo raft, which allows us to, in survival with no cheats, pin a mob to a spot locked in a particular direction and then hide all the evidence that they have been pinned. 
This cow literally cannot move and you can barely tell. This works especially well on mobs that don't actually have a sitting animation, such as most of the animals, our villagers and, of course, witches. And here's a quick comparison on exactly why it works. You can just absolutely tell that the villager to the left is so much lower than the villager to the right. I like that they included this detail and I like what we can do with it. Now here's how to make it look like there aren't any rafts actually involved. We have to start with a 2x2 two two of mud or soul soil. Then we place the bamboo raft itself on it and you can see it sinks immediately. That's good, we want that. Next up we of course push our villager in it and finagle him around the way we want to. No matter what angle we take, that's the angle at which this villager will now remain forever. He can still move the head, but I think that only adds to the conviction that he is in fact alive. Place some slabs here, place some slabs here, put down pistons to put them in the place, activate, and voila! We have a seamless villager. As long as nobody looks at the two sticks reaching out from below the concrete and into his shins. You can also hide them basically on the ground level as opposed to a slab one, but that will require a carpet. Same as always, two by two, but now we put slabs in there. Put a boat and place our mob. Now they especially can't really go anywhere, so we just start spamming carpet and get our boy locked in the carpet, basically underground. Yeah, he's a little bit on the short side, but uh, it's still pretty good looking, right? Also renaming a mob Gram or Dinner Bone in this position leads to some absolutely hilarious results. Yeah, no, this cow is just... just laying down. Oh wow, that's a very impressive handstand you're doing. Without the help of your hands, mind you. And now I can finally recreate my entire family actively refusing to talk to me. Also, my 8-year-old and I made this chicken man and then laughed for 20 minutes, so I think you deserve to know about him too. And there you have it, those are some really cool build hacks that I found and thought you should know about it. Are there any that I should know about instead? Let me know in the comments and also let me know which one you found the most helpful. It's gotta be the chicken man, right? Like, like it's gotta be. Thank you everybody so much for watching, please leave a like if you enjoyed because that helps a lot and do subscribe because I will be posting more videos about the Minecraft 1.20 update as I find out more ways to make silly things like this. My name has been Zloy XP. to be continued, have a good one, bye bye.